Hi everyone, welcome to the Chinta book review series, Beautiful Books. As they say, if you enjoy diamonds, if you love diamonds, you got to appreciate the mines as well. So, I mean, every single day, day in, day out, we solve so many interesting problems at Chinta, be it mathematics, be it computer science. And I mean, we thought that we should take a while to just go ahead and appreciate some of the beautiful books that act as a repository for these lovely problems. Today, I'm going to share one very interesting book with you, which is called Famous Puzzles by Great Mathematicians. It's written by Miodrag S. Petkovic. And uh, it's published by AMS Publishers, which just, I mean, speaks for itself, right? I mean, anything published by the American Mathematical Society in, uh, in mathematics is, I mean, absolute gold stuff, right? So the good thing about this book is that it introduces us to these mathematical concepts via interesting puzzles. It just challenges the problem solver in you inherently to try and approach a problem with minimal background required. If you have actually uh, gone through books by Martin Gardner or Raymond Smullyan, you're going to absolutely love this. Whereas if, if you just compare this to probably a Martin Gardner or a Raymond Smullyan book, uh, you would you would have one major winning point of this book is is where that it's it's actually uniform and it's totally impartial. I say that from a point of view uh, of, a, of a problem solver who might have his own preferences, right? Like we all have our own uh, subtopics that we have an affinity for. For someone, it could be number theory. For someone, it could be combinatorics. Someone might like geometry a little bit more. Someone might like graph theory. This book is is such a unique assortment, much like a box of chocolates, right? It it has all of those topics therein, and uh, there is and the distribution, as I was saying, is is absolutely uniform. You will find a fair share of problems for each of these topics, and let's say hypothetically, if combinatorics appeals to you more, you can just jump onto that section without any sort of dependency on on any of the other sections, and you can take any problem and solve it on its own merit. There are some lovely problems. If I quote a few, uh, there is the uh, sailors, the monkey, and the coconut problem. This is obviously uh, in, in the purview of number theory. So, I mean, I think some of you must have uh, heard of it as well. Like, it goes this way that mm, some sailors, five sailors are stranded on an island and there were some coconuts So uh, that they gathered uh, throughout the day to sort, sort of consume at night, and there was one monkey on that island as well. So, while they were sleeping uh, at night, each of these sailors, they had this insecurity that, okay, what is going to happen to my share of coconuts? So, one sailor wakes up up, and then what he does is he just divides the current number of coconuts present into five equal shares, separates his share out, and he sees that there is one coconut left. He gives it over to the monkey. The second sailor wakes up. I mean, obviously, the first sailor then goes to sleep. The second sailor wakes up again, has the same insecurities, looks at the current number of existing coconuts, divides it into five shares, separates his share. There was one left, gives it to the monkey. Third sailor does the same. Fourth sailor does the same. The fifth sailor also wakes up, whatever remaining number of coconuts was there, divides it into five equal parts, removes his share secretly, and just gives that one left over to the monkey. The question is, what was the least number of coconuts that the sailors could have gathered? The least number. There could be many values for this, but what was the least number that the coconuts could have ended, I mean, that the sailors could have ended up gathering? If you're if you've done this problem before or if you've heard problems of this similar kind, you would know that this is related to modular arithmetic and it introduces you to a beautiful concept called the Chinese remainder theorem. If you try to just bring yourself totally into the jargon or into the notation of Chinese remainder theorem, it can be at first glance a bit intimidating. But when you approach this problem and you try it using your own knowledge, your own knowledge of divisors, quotients and remainders, it's going to be that free flowing for you as a problem solver and it's going to be all the more uh, enriching for you when you actually get to know that, okay, this is the relation that we know as the Chinese remainder theorem today. This, in number theory, there are some absolutely brilliant and some absolutely amazing problems uh, in this book. You would find the Josephus problem, you would find uh, the Archimedes cattle problem and I mean the countless others, so to say. Talking about combinator you'll find the misaddress lettuce problem that we have also talked about um, in one of our computer science videos. You will find Kirkman's schoolgirl problem. You will find uh, Arthur Cayley's counting problem. And you'll have, I mean, plenty. You'll also have an introduction to gray codes out there. So that's, that's a pretty interesting mix. One very interesting feature of this book that actually sets it apart is that it has got two sections that usually these sort of puzzle and recreational mathematics books do not cover. Those two sections are physics and graphs. So 
if you talk about, I mean, if you are a little bit uh, interested into computer science, you would definitely appreciate graphs, right? Graph theory, uh, you are aware of the entire, like, I mean, sort of the entire set of problems that graph theory can potentially solve, and it helps you represent a problem that very well, correct? So if we, I mean, Think about those sort of puzzles that you used to solve, that you used to solve as computer games or mobile games, right? River crossing problems. There used to be, um, you know, a man, a cabbage, a wolf, and uh, a sheep or a goat, whatever, interchangeably. Uh, that used to be the computer game. You tried to bring uh, those people from one bank of the river to the other bank where there was only a single boat and only two people could be present uh, to row the boat, right? I mean, to row the boat, right? And so um, you know about those interdependencies. You cannot leave the goat and the cabbage together. You cannot leave the wolf and the goat together. And you cannot leave the man and the wolf together. So this, as you know, can be modeled um, beautifully by a graph, right? As in nodes and vertices, and you would... Um, beautifully be able to highlight these dependencies using edges and then you would just be trying to find out that perfect arrangement that gets all those people from one bank of the river to the other bank of the river there would be Popeye's family crossing the bridge and all of those things as well so graph theory also it does have uh, the end queen's problem and the knight's reentrant route as well so all close twos found by a knight on a chessboard uh, if you love chess there is plenty for you uh, to find in this book in the physics section as I mentioned there is a lovely problem which uh, um, says that let's say in in a circular arena a man and a lion are trapped and can the man have any course of action such that it can uh, constantly evade the lion and save himself given that a man has a definite velocity and the lion has a definite velocity this is also famously known as the radios problem and this book actually offers a brilliant brilliant treatment of the problem um, I mean, the geometry section also talks about some lovely uh, concepts uh, across across different domains, like uh, both in triangles and circles and everything. You would have wonderful relations for you to study and for you to pick up. Um, that just makes this book, as I as I uh, said previously, right? It makes it the perfect assortment of concepts and perfect assortment of problems that you first try out, you read it as an example, and then you try to solve it on your own. So often we have seen that, you know, parents uh, of, of the various kids who talk to us, they look for a book that is suited for a kid who is good at mathematics and just wants to make that transition to algorithms and computer science. This, my friends, would be one such book which just helps you elevate your concepts to that level, bring brings you into all of those topics, lets you independently think as a problem solver, and also introduces you to, to that perfect concept, right? So I mean, if, uh, if you find uh, yourself enjoying these problems, if you find yourself, it's not only about the exercises, much like other problem solving books that you have, it's not only about the exercises, you, uh, you, you, you just try to solve a problem and come up with a solution, it's not only that. It's more about what you read and then you try to apply, you learn a lot while solving as well as when you read the examples that have already been solved in this book. So if you're enjoying reading all the problems in this book and all the theory that they talk about, you're definitely up for a beautiful, beautiful time ahead of you. And uh, yeah, so if summer vacations are around the corner, read this book. If monsoon vacations are around the corner, read this book. And even if no vacations are around the corner, just go ahead and read this book. It's going to be a beautiful experience for you. And you're just going to enjoy. If you're spending, you might as well spend uh, all your weekends trying to think about how to solve that one problem. And that is what makes you a champion problem solver. Thank you.